Here comes a two to the three to the four. Lock in the hubs, four by four. Power stroke diesel churning up the sand on the Texas shore. Oh my good lord, someone pour me up a double shot of whiskey. They know Kenny and Jack Daniels got a history. There's a party down the beach, come with me. Everybody at the beach getting tipsy. Candy follow with me. Look at that hot brown on a paper plate. Woo! Welcome back to Candy Adventures. I'm Chris. And I'm Elizabeth. And that thing right there is Mona. And we are here on the beautiful seashore of Padre Island National Seashore here in Southern Texas. I'll take it to you, they republic. Specifically in Corpus Christi, which is almost near the border. We're in our element boondocking. We just spent the last couple weeks living in a campground, uh, trying to figure out what we're doing here. And in the interim, we did get to uh, drop some of our other equipment in our uh, truck, not truck Honda Ridgeline into a storage unit so that we can just be one vehicle right now, which is really, really nice. With no trailers, no motorcycle trailer or boat trailer. It's all in covered storage. And you probably can't tell because it's uh, the clouds up, but the sun's right there and it's on its way down. We don't have anything for dinner. I'm really hoping I can pull something from the ocean. A ball of trash. So I'm gonna go ahead and bait up a hook with a little bit of a fish bite. And I do have my Texas fishing license. I just talked to the Texas, a Texas game warden. So I do have my Texas fishing license. And I don't, which is why he will be fishing. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a fish bite on a hook and get out here into the surf and see if I can rustle up some sort of fish for dinner. And I'll be here filming it. Oh yeah, official beach wear is barefoot. We are here a little bit later than we wanted to be. One, because it is a Saturday, uh, and that leads to two, which is because it's a Saturday, the beach that we're on is 60 miles of seashore that you can drive on, but the first eight are completely packed with people. And if you know us or the channel, we like to get away from people, which just means you have to drive a little bit farther and it doesn't sound like a lot except for the fact that you're going pretty slow because you're driving through sand the whole time so it took almost two hours to get to where we are now and that's why we're in kind of a crunch to get the fishing line in the water and hopefully catch a fish i don't think we're going to be pretty selective for today's catch you got an awful nice shirt there sir a Montaquilla shirt. <laughs> I'm a big fan of butter. I don't like ripping things I don't believe in. I do very much believe in butter. <laughs> so I'm just gonna throw this little, it's kind of like a pompano rig out here in the surf. And what I'm gonna use for bait is these uh, fish bites. It is just little strips of impregnated bait and you don't have to refrigerate it and it's not messy. So it's really nice if you're living out of your camper, you don't have to stop at a bait shop or have a bubbler to keep your shrimp alive. And it's just these little, it looks like gum almost. And inside of here, there's a mesh. And that mesh of material in there helps keep it on the hook. So little bait thieves and <laughs> other little fish and blue crabs can mess with it and you won't lose your bait. So I really, really like little fish bites. I'll take your trash so it don't blow away. And I got a rusty little pompano rig. A pompano would be nice, but I would really like to have uh, a Southern Kingfish or uh, some people call them whiting. They go by a lot of different names and they don't have any size or bag restrictions. A lot of people don't look at them as game, they're not game fish, but they are delicious to eat. So I'll be very happy with a pompano, but I'd be also very happy with a whiting. What about a catfish? <laughs> I don't particularly enjoy dealing with hardhead catfish. Catfish all day, that's my specialty. The meat is good. Um, but they are slimy and uh, I would rather a riding, but we might be having hardhead catfish. You having a time? <laughs> Beautiful. For dinner, I, I had planned, we like to mix foods from different places that we've been. Uh, and uh, I've spent, a little bit of time in Thailand and the Philippines and I got to where I really like curries. 
So we have some green curry paste that I want to do a green curry burrito. So we have our wraps, we have our tortillas, and uh, you know, to bring a little bit of that South Texas Mexican-ness <laughs> to the dish. And then we have some green curry paste and some green peppers and some vegetables. And I want to make, and some rice, and I want to make some burritos. With the some fish. Thai green curry fish burritos. But in order to do that, we have to get a fish first. She's really having a blast. <laughs> The beach is her favorite place. Oh my gosh. That is her Ew. native land. She's from Guam, the Pacific Island, and uh, she grew up as a puppy. We'd always go and hang out on the beach. So that's like the first biome that she knows. <laughs> that was her very first camping trip with us. I think we'd only had her for like three days. So she really enjoys this. And she's allergic to grass, and there's no grass here, which is awesome. Good girl, good girl. It's time. There we go. sent out some of our fishing lures for our higher tier Patreon and I had never heard of this beer brand but Chris said it is a Tejas original Shinerbach and I found they have tall boys, big boys. So this is what I grabbed for Chris from the gas station. But our fishing lures, the bottle caps, are Shinerbach as well. So we wanted to keep it in theme of like Texas beer, Texas location, Texas beach. It's a Tejas vibe. It's a tall one. Oh. <laughs> Got some little fish I'm trying to steal my bait. <laughs> a little nibbler? Okay, let me probably, open it for you. Probably a little catfish. There we go. We'll one hand this together. <laughs> Very yellow day. <laughs> This makes me feel like I'm helping. I'm holding the camera and I'll hold your beer. <laughs> I'm, I'm part of the fishing. <laughs> Little is bitty something. Catfish. Oh, two! And a whitey. Hey! <laughs> hey, no, no, no. Don't eat it. So this is exactly what I thought we were going to catch. Uh, southern kingfish and a little hard-headed catfish all in one. Uh, I'm going to throw both these back. You could eat this. This would be a good eating fish, but I'm going to throw them back and let him grow a little more. And then the catfish, you can eat them too, but... I, I don't really like dealing with them too much. They do taste fine though. But these are a little small. Catching little catfish after little catfish <laughs> after little catfish, little bait thieves. Look at that big fat belly. Might even be the same one. So when she sees Chris release a fish, she sees it go into the water and she tries to sniff for it to see if she can find it. Ooh. 
Bless her heart, she tries. Oh my gosh! Ah! So that was really cool. I thought that was a blue crab because there's been a blue crab hanging around my feet that's been eating the little pieces of bait um, that come off when we take the, the fish off the hook. But that was actually a little, a little young sea turtle. That was really cool. I, in here surfing the waves at first we thought maybe he was tangled up but he looked healthy and fine just cruising the surf so super cool the good news is that the dog does not have to rely on our fishing for her dinner so we're gonna go ahead and feed her because she uses the sun as her judgment of time for dinner and the sun's going down so it's time for her to eat You ready? Oh, look at that. It's overflowing. Oh. Princess. Good girl. We got some a little bit bigger, hypothetically hard to get anything any smaller. <laughs> it's only uphill. Eh? Eh? Oh, you got two! Two little whitings. Oh my god, you said you couldn't get any smaller. Look at that thing. I said it don't get any smaller and then I caught smaller. Oh my gosh, look how tiny it is. <laughs> the top one is a great size though. Yeah, this one's eating size. I'm gonna throw the little one back. Hopefully we can catch one more whiting about like this. These fish don't get real big. They do get bigger than this, but this is a good eating size. Super exciting. That is uh, a success on the book, even if it's just one. Our luck is usually once we throw some back because they're too small, we don't catch any. So uh, we simultaneously caught the largest one and the smallest one thus far. Wham bam. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> or sir, sorry. Um, it'd be nice if we had one more slightly larger one, so we had two. Uh, but that, that can uh, make a dinner for tonight. Yeah, it'll just be light on fish, but it's still good. We're not too picky with the type of fish here. Uh, we've eaten fish that people consider bait fish or, or trash fish, and um, we've had these fish before, and they're good. They're not a sport fish. A lot of the, some place call them sea mullet. Some place call them whiting, some people call them southern kingfish. They got a lot of different names and a lot of people don't really respect it. It's not a fish that you're going to put on your Instagram reel. I really like to catch them. They don't get very big, maybe like 20 inches or something. Um, they don't fight hard or anything, but they taste good. It's yeah. very white meat and very flaky, so I like them. Committed a beer crime and let Chris's beer get washed into the surf. Thank goodness we have backups. All we were catching was sargasm. The last two or three catches I made were just big clumps of sargasm. So that's not very fun to surf fish in, but we do have a fish, which is fantastic for this channel. Uh, so we are going to do a catch and cook. I'm going to start cooking the rice first, just because that's going to take a long time and then set the grill up outside and then just cook that fish whole it's just been scaled and gutted and uh, deheaded. If I was to fillet that, you'd probably lose a lot of meat in doing that. We are rice rinsers here. I did rinse this rice three times to get rid of the starch or to reduce the starch. If you've been around for a minute, you've seen that we tried sandboarding when we were in Nevada uh, with a DIY sandboard because a brand new one was $200 and we're always on a really tight budget here. And we did splurge and get a used skim board to try while we were here on the beach. So the plan was to do it in the morning, but I think Chris, since we're just kind of waiting for things to cook, is doing a little bit of a test run. The board is a little bit small for his weight. It's more for my weight, but it's, uh, it was 50 bucks. So beggars can't be choosers. He's still throwing it, trying to see if he can ride it while we're waiting for dinner. 
Wow, we got a good glide in. This falls apart. Yum. So we got a white fish, little coconut milk, green curry paste, corn, peppers. All right, Mona gets to have her piece. That's all the fish skin and fish tail. You want this? Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Thumbs up. Tastes like a Thai green curry fish burrito. <laughs> it's very good. Tastes exactly like what we made it to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really good. We're going to finish our way through these. We'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning. We're super excited to be having our breakfast today because it is something that I have been wanting to make now for probably a year or two. And we've never made it before, so um, it's a it's a big thing for us. And then doing it in a truck camper. <laughs> I happen to be an ube addict. Uh, again, I spent quite a bit of time in the Philippines, and we spent a lot of time in Guam. Ube is a purple yam that is most often associated with like sweets, mm -hmm. and I love sweets. And we're gonna com combine two worlds here because we like all kinds of fusion here on Candy Adventures. And we're gonna take churros. Uh, which are Hispanic Hispanic and, and Mexican associated, and we are going to smash them together with the ube flavor. Yeah! Get it, hot brown! Yeah. Get it, hot brown king! Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to take uh, our ube extract here, which we searched, searched uh, uh, high and low for and got some. We got some ube extract, and we're going to make a dipping sauce for our cinnamon sugar churros here in the camper. We have our dough pre-made, which is just a cup and a half of Bisquick, and then uh, half a cup of warm water, and then like two tablespoons-ish of sugar mixed in, where it's kind of doughy like this. So let's get started. I'm going to get to work. I'm very excited about breakfast. This is like carnival breakfast. Uh, it just sounds amazing. And we've got the beautiful beach outside, and we're going to have some beautiful food right here. So let's get going. pretty delicious the one difference that we uh, didn't realize that we had bought gluten-free flour which is rice flour and so we'll see how that affects the consistency but this looks pretty good now we're going to get to the ube part the dipping sauce part for our churros we're going to be using the world's greatest ingredient if you're into sweets and that is sweetened condensed milk mm -hmm. so we're going to put about this much oh, yeah. sweetened condensed milk into here crema a little crema and then for the Iron Chef ingredient here, we have some ube extract. Ube flavor is kind of a, almost like a vanilla-y flavor. It's a hard, it's a hard flavor to peg, but it's kind of vanilla-y. It's very good. I always say it tastes like cookies and cream. Two drops. This stuff is incredibly. Whoa, it looks jet black. It, it looks like ink. It looks. It's. It, it works almost like ink. It's so dark, and a little bit goes a long way, and it will stain your fingers. So Whoa. purple. That was just one little drop or two of that extract. To top it off, I'm going to put just a little bit of uh, these coconut flakes in it. All right, so we have... Oh my gosh, it does look like... <laughs> you just elevated it with the coconut flakes. Look, look at that. that. Look at that hot brown on a paper plate. Woo! Look at that. That is a good churro. Look at that churro stick. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> 
That's hot crunchy sugar. Yeah. It's hot crunchy ube cinnamon sugar, coconutty flavored. I don't recommend many of our recipes here on Candy Adventures. I'll recommend this. Yeah. This is absolutely all good. day. Yeah. If you got if you got a little bisquick hanging out in your house, this is it. Definitely try this. I wonder if this is gonna turn my lips purple. Whoa. That sauce made it so good. I mean, these were already good by themselves, but oh my gosh, that sauce is really good. We're gonna take our delicious little uh, ube churro. Uh, Fili Filipino Mexican food cross and go enjoy it out on the beach. Uh, so let's go have a good morning out on the beach and finish these off. I am, I'm gonna punish this plate. Uh-oh. <laughs> Did somebody oh. camp right beside us last night? What is this? <laughs> it feels like a metal box. Somebody camped right beside us. They got right on top <laughs> of us. We can't get out of here. Oh my God, they camped on all sides of us. <laughs> Oh my God, oh my gosh, our boat. Where did our truck go? Oh my God, our truck nut truck is here. Okay, I'm gonna come clean with you guys. Uh, I'm gonna break the cycle that my stepfather never broke with me, <laughs> telling the truth, is uh, we are down here in South Texas and we took jobs. Yep. And the reason why we're not on the beach where we were last night is we had to rush back and look at a, a house for rent Yep. because we've called a thousand of them on our way down here and this is the only one that got back to us so we had to rush over last night and do the paperwork and move into a storage unit and then finish the rest of this video we tried to make it as long as we could without uh, full-time jobs and trying to make youtube work uh, and un unfortunately when the demonetization happened um, we had to make the decision to go back to full-time jobs while we try to pursue youtube so it'll be similar to how we've been running the channel for the past five years, six years, um, and uh, we'll, we'll try to fit in YouTube on the weekends when we can. Yep, so we have our storage unit, we have our boat, it has never been inside, we have our camper which has also never been inside, and we are also people who are inside. I'm not liking it, we've been here for a few weeks, living in one place in a neighborhood or around people, I absolutely once you've tasted sweet freedom, it's hard to come back to, yeah. a, to a regular grind. But we just couldn't make it work financially uh, without at least one of us having a full-time job. And a full-time job just unfortunately means that you have to be based somewhere. Yeah, so we both have full-time jobs. Um, we have a lease now, so this videos <laughs> are going to have to be based out of South Texas for the inevitable future. It's kind of like when we were in Guam. Yeah. All the videos had to be based out of Guam for that period of time. So it's kind of yeah. be, be, so if you're expecting snowy mountains and stuff out of us in the near future, I'm, I'm sorry, but we're not going to be able yeah. to make that happen. And as much as we wanted the truck camper jumping around dream to, to happen, it just couldn't with the revenue that we were making. Just it's, it's not enough. Uh, so we're trying to make it work now with some jobs while still trying to do YouTube again. So we're going to pound these churros and we hope you guys will enjoy seeing South Texas in the near future. Uh, and we have uh, got to get back because we got to go to work tomorrow. So uh, at a brick and mortar job. Yep. <laughs> so we'll see you next video. Oh my good Lord. Some of y'all are going to leave bad comments for this song. But that's all right. Just move along. Can't come to the song.